So OpenAI just released a brand new model and it's not like any other model. It's meant specifically for reasoning and for tackling very complicated tasks, like for example, coding, which needs a very thorough human-like thinking. And that's what the new O1 models are about. And if you notice right over here in the benchmarks, they are killing it. So for example, GPT-4 here is orange and the sky blue in here is the O1. And if you notice, it's literally excelling like when it comes to math, GPT-4 is like 60, the other one is 90, physics as well in here. So anything like needs very complicated reasoning and a lot of thoughts going into, you know, the process of how the model works, it's literally excelling in those. But obviously if you notice like, you know, Obviously in here, if you think more of like, you know, from a language perspective, for example, language, English language in here, it's literally the same. So there isn't much improving in that regards because this model is all about reasoning. And the most important part we care about as developers in here is actually how well this model is gonna do compared to previous models or specifically compared to the GPT-4 in here or the CLA 3.5 Sonnet. When it comes to coding and solving complicated tasks or like building real world applications, because Building an application needs reasoning. When you give it the chain of thoughts or you give it the instructions that it needs to follow, it needs to go through a chain of thoughts. And that's what the model is all about, like making sure it goes through a very human-like chain of thoughts in order to properly and perfectly give you the right solution. So if you notice in here in Code Forces, which is the platform for competitive challenges and you know competitive coding, the GPT-40 in here is like the 11th percentile. GPT or O1 preview is 62nd percentile and the O1 model in here is 89th percentile. And this O1 model in here is yet to be released. It's not made public just yet. We only have the O1 preview and the O1 mini, which we're gonna talk about in a second. But still, all of these in here are not made public. All the benchmarks in here are not publicly made by OpenAI, so we cannot make sure those are correct and valid benchmarks and results. So maybe the, the results are fake. We, we never know kind of things. But what we can do is actually put those into the real test. And the Code Forces platform is already putting restrictions in the usage of AI just like one day after the release of the O1 model in here. And they put in like a whole thread in here of how, you know, to properly use URLI AI and when not to use AI and cheating and this kind of stuff. Because apparently O1 is too dangerous for this kind of like competitive challenges and problem solving in general. Oh yeah, I noticed a couple of people in here complaining that that the N1 model in here is still struggling to solve this strawberry problem that GPT-40 and the rest of the models were struggling too. But for me, it works perfectly. So let's say we want to test that problem. So I'm going to use the O1 Mini, not the O1 Preview. And apparently the O1 Mini is better than Preview. More on that in a second. But I'm going to ask it this. How many R's, and I'm just going to put it like this, in Strawberry. Okay. Click enter in here. And well, the first thing you're going to notice about these two models is going to take some time, even though it didn't take time in here. But the O1 Mini in here knows exactly that it has three layers. Most of the time, it gets that mistaken for two layers instead of three layers. I mean, for me in here, it's working perfectly with no issues, so that's pretty good. And the reason behind me saying that O1 Mini is better than the O1 Preview, even though like the O1 Preview is more of like just the trial preview version of the official regular O1, which is yet to be released. Well, I put a tweet about this one just a, a couple hours ago, where I was going through this, you know, Code Forces website, and I was looking to their benchmarks for the new O1. So apparently when they did this coding kind of test or benchmark between the you know O1 Mini and O1 Preview, they found that O1 Mini is like 1650 ELO rating compared to the O1 Preview in here, which is 1258 ELO rating. And yes, the strongest model in here is like the O1, which is 1673. And there is another sort of like fine-tuned, kind of like fine-tuned on, on competitive programming sort of problems, uh, which basically like yielded almost like 1807 sort of like ELO rating, which is enormous. And yes, from my perspective as well, for like when I tried this on the Opera router or like, you know, using the O1 Mini versus O1 Preview, I always, always found that O1 Mini is better for some reason, the O1 Preview. O1 Preview is just like very bad and it takes forever to return something. So maybe it's just me, but I notice a lot of people are actually complaining about the same issue in here as well. So yeah, if you don't have access to the O1 Mini or O1 Preview or any O1 instead of, you know, chat GPT sort of dashboard or playground, 
What I personally love to use is the Open Rider website, which basically gives you all the models on hand, like literally just like choose the model you want and you can use it. Every single model from Cloud, GPT-4L, you know, Lima 3.1, uh, 400, anything you want. Um, and the cool thing about this is actually you can put credits. I've put $5. I don't know how long ago that was. I think that was two months ago. It says in here, like two months ago, put $5. I've been using it on a lot of testing with different models. And it just like still got almost $3 in here and I've used a lot. And those $3 are still pretty good for running a lot of like 01 sort of prompt, even though the 01 is ridiculously overpriced, like ridiculously overpriced. All right, from a developer perspective to test this, I want to actually, you know, put the capabilities of the L1 mini or preview, however you want to use it, into the test by asking it to build real world sort of like apps and projects, for example, a landing page or maybe do authentication. Pretty much we tested this before using Cursor AI, but before the release of L1 like models, we were using Cloud 3.5 Sonnet inside of Cursor AI, but now Cursor AI actually supports L1 mini. So if I go to cursor settings in here, if you go to like models, you're going to find L1 mini and L1 preview both like available for you in here. If you have like a cursor subscription or something, you're going to have that right away, which is amazing. And I disable preview in here because it sucks. You can still whatever you want. You still use whatever you want. I'm going to choose L1 mini in here over the others. And I'm just going to go, go ahead and put this into the test. So before we did a quick test using Cloud 3.5 Sonnet and we asked it sort of like this prompt. So if I'm going to use the composer that I already have in here. So the composer, I basically put this instruction where, oh, please go ahead and create a dark themed, cool landing page using chat CN, Tailwind CSS. Uh, the landing page is for like a new AI, sort of like SaaS. L13 has images and apply filters. And I'm just giving it a bunch of like uh, constraints and instructions on how to use it or how to create the landing page and stuff like that. Well, the results from Cloud 3.5 Sonnet using cursor AI as well, and here using the new composer mode, well, actually decent, not fascinating because UI is relatively very hard and this goes into creativity side sort of kind of thing. Um, so this is actually what a yield for me. Like everything was put together by the AI, by Cloud 3.5 Sonnet. It's decent enough. It can be used like a starting point and you can, you know, update this as you move forward. Um, but right now I want to use it with the O1 Mini. So you notice like down here, I don't know if you can see that on the camera, you probably won't, but it's selecting O1 Mini in here. Well, this should be good enough. So you can notice in here, there is a one mini right over here. So I made sure to go back in here and reset the whole project here. Like I'm starting with a brand new Next.js sort of project. And I can go in and use the new composer mode, put the instructions I did before, and I'm going to go ahead and click submit in here and start the O1 mini sort of like chain of thoughts and let it think about this and how to create this. So hopefully it's going to yield something cool for us. I know like the O1 family of models are sort of like compute intensive and they take quite some time to return something. Um, apparently it didn't take that long to return this. Um, I'm not sure if it's going to look good or it's going to look bad. It's asking me to install React icons, I think because it's using a couple of icons from React icons in here, which is understandable, completely fine. And I'm just going to go and do accept all. So this should go ahead and add those right over there. So I'm going to have SRC landing page. Uh, so it has SRC, then it has pages. So it's not using the new app directory, like the new Next.js app directory. So this is a very important point in here. It's using the old one and it's just putting a land, landing page. It's not putting like home page. Okay. So, um, oh yeah. And it's like empty. I don't know what happened in there, but uh, maybe there is something happened. Uh, I'm just going to do reapply, accept, just to make sure I apply this. Oh, well, there's clearly something wrong in here, or maybe I'm wrong. No, I'm not. Or maybe, yeah, wait a second. No, I'm not wrong. It's putting it in a completely different spot. It's putting it in a very weird spot. So I'm going to go ahead and try to run this from scratch. So second attempt in here, and it looks like it's doing something completely different, which is good. So it's like changing the page.tsx, the app page.tsx, which is the home page. And it's putting a new component in here, which is the landing page. It's like including that landing page inside of there here. So that's, that's good. I'm going to go and try to accept all in here. Hopefully this will go ahead and apply all the changes to the page.tsx in here. I don't know why it's still putting this in the SRC pages. I just doesn't make sense for me, but, and it's trying to, for some reason, bring icons from here which is very stupid again. I know this is very wrong. 
I mean, Cloud 3.5 Sonic, the previous, like previously when I tried it, it works flawlessly without any issues and it works from the first try. So yeah, cool, O1, very cool, I love that. I, I love you already. I think I'm gonna go back to Cloud or maybe just wait the official regular O1 kind of like model or maybe wait for improvements. So I made some modifications in here. I, instead of like saying made cool or made a dark theme cool landing page, I put home page in here. I'm just gonna put home page using chat CN and table CSS. I'm literally keeping the same thing in here and I'm gonna give it a third try. Hopefully this time works and I'm using the O1 mini. So um, I'm not sure, should I just go and choose the preview? Maybe that would be better. Well, anyway, I'm, I'm just gonna give you a mini one more try in here and see how it goes. Well, first impression in here, it's still putting the landing page inside of like SRC pages, even though it doesn't exist, you shouldn't be putting anything inside of there, but that's fine. We can fix that manually. And it's putting this like correctly when it comes to icons, it's just using React icons. So maybe, I don't know, I just wanna look into that very weird homepage that it didn't wanna actually like work or something. So I'm gonna move this uh, it, from like SRC pages, I'm gonna create a folder for it. I'm gonna do it like components and I'm just gonna put landing pages inside of that. I'm gonna move. Yeah, it's not AI anymore if I have to do all the work in here, but anyway, so I'm gonna delete SRC in here. Got landing page. And yes, I'm gonna go ahead and do pmpm add react icons to make sure to install, you know, the missing library. All right, cool. So install this, uh, hopefully you can get these errors resolved ASAP. Now we got this. This is not how we need it. Uh, I don't know if this is gonna work. All right, it does work, so it's good. The only problem, these are still like, it says fab background and gallery and bouquet. They do not exist inside of here, which I think it doesn't, right? Because, um, yeah, even though after installing, it's still like Next.js is failing in here miserably. So yeah, O1 is miserable. So you know what, we're just gonna go inside the composer again, put the same instructions I did before, but this time I'm gonna switch from the mini to uh, the preview. So O1 preview, apparently it doesn't wanna switch for some reason. So thank you, Cursor, I uh, I love you already. It's, you're, I don't know, but it's a lot of things are going wrong. So yeah, if you're worried about AI replacing you any soon, I do not think so. Well, correction, definitely not doing that. All right, so I did reset everything. I'm choosing the O1 preview right now. Before it wasn't working, I'm gonna go ahead and click submit. Hopefully, it's gonna get me something, but all right, usage based pricing is required. I do, uh, okay, so the low limits for the preview, I literally didn't use it. Well, okay, this O1 thing is, is just a mess. All right, anyway, so the second test in here I wanna run, which I did run before using Cloud 3.5 Sonic and using Cursor AI in here. If you wanna check out the results, I'm not gonna go into details about that, so if you wanna check out the results, you can go ahead and watch the previous video you're gonna find it in my channel. I'm gonna find a link in the description below as well. But the test in here is simply just creating a register and a login pages with you know, different description in here, like fields needs to be included, like full name, email, password, yada, yada, yada. And the most important part is it goes into like databases. I'm gonna create SQLite database. I'm gonna use Prisma. Um, and you tell it a specific instruction of how to do authentication. And for example, use next auth, how to do the database. When to um, use like secure cookies and GWT, a lot of details. So it needs a lot of reasoning, a lot of sort of like information and it needs the model to probably like think like a real human being. So I'm gonna use L1 Mini in here because preview apparently is out of quota or something. I haven't used it at all, but whatever. So I'm just gonna click submit and um, yeah, see if this actually compares to the previous Cloud 3.5 Sonnet sort of kind of like experiment or not. So apparently in here it's providing you with all the required stuff. It looks like, well, it uses or it gives you the Prisma, uh, next auth in here, sort of like handler, it gives you the register page, register TypeScript in here for handling, you know, the HTTP request, like the post request in here, there's login, there is providers for session providers, which is good. And it puts that inside of the, you know, you layout, sort of like the root layouts in here, which is also pretty good. Um, for the description in here, when it's trying to describe exactly what's happening from the right hand side, it's like, unlike Cloud 3.5 Sonnet, it's not giving you instructions on how to set up these kind of things because obviously now we're using new things like Prisma or using ShatCN in here, maybe some components does, like ShatCN components, I guess. 
Uh, I don't know what if this package does even exist or not, but uh, it's not giving you instructions in here like what packages or libraries that needs to be installed first and how to run, for example, uh, Prisma initialization to create a database and migrate the full uh, you know database, like the, the initial schema in here. A lot of stuff are missing in here. So it's not perfect as previous, but um, you never know like until you run this and you make sure that it works. But apparently for me, as far as I can tell, it's not going to run at all and it's still missing a couple things. I think with the right adjustments and manual modifications, it would. Um, probably this package does not exist because as far as I know, Shatsyn does not operate like this. Shatsyn is more of like a copy paste component library. There's no official component library where you can import those. I don't know if this is something new I don't know about, but I'm pretty sure this is not how it works. And the fact that it doesn't tell you all of these is just not working perfectly. Also, the TypeScript stuff in here are not populated as well. So the AI is not figuring out TypeScript types correctly as well. So doing a very quick Google search about chassis and components and just adding NPM in here to know if this exists as a package or not. Apparently, and obviously it does not, Chatsian, this is like, this is not how Chatsian works. So this is a very initial big brain fart. That's all I can say. And uh, yeah, this is definitely not working expected. And I'm definitely going back to Cloud 3.5 Sonnet just right after this. It's, I don't know, I don't, coding wise doesn't look or feel pretty good for me. I haven't tried a lot of reasoning sort of like tasks for it or something, but from a coding developer perspective, this is not perfect. Even the autocomplete that Cursor AI uses, I find it a little degrading as well. But um, yeah, I'll keep you guys posted on Twitter if you want to know more details about which one is which and which one is doing better. But anyway, guys, thank you for watching. This was a quick video about how things are actually going with the new O1 models. Is it going to replace you soon or maybe next year? I don't know. But keep an eye on this. Keep an eye on my Twitter. Maybe you get replaced very soon. Don't tell anybody. But yeah. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. See you guys hopefully in the next ones.